guys i have a microphone it's right over here i uh, you know the last video didn't sound very clear because i recorded it uh, with a, another microphone uh, but this is a multi-directional mic so it might have a lot of noises but uh, this is the video review of the nokia 3.2 let's get to the unboxing first So there's an animation for Android One now too. So there you go. It doesn't come with any lot to it. It's just the Google apps and the support app from Nokia. So during MWC 2019, uh, Nokia announced a couple of uh, phones. Uh, they announced the Nokia 210, which is a feature phone, uh, the Nokia OnePlus, with, which I just reviewed. I don't know where the card will go, somewhere here. Uh, so you can check the review of the Nokia OnePlus, uh, the Nokia 3.2, uh, the Nokia 4.2, uh, which I still haven't unboxed, and the Nokia 9 Pure View. So I've used the Nokia OnePlus. Uh, this is the review of the Nokia 3.2, and I'll be unboxing the Nokia 4.2 later on. So if you want to watch all those, uh, just subscribe. Uh, I've been using this phone as a secondary device for the last about three weeks now. And I've had a couple of issues with the phone that I'll be sharing in this video uh, that have made it the secondary device and not the main device. First of all, uh, this is a 13,999 recommended retail price phone. I know you can get it for much less. So uh, you can get it for around 12,000. Uh, in some deals, you can even get it for 11,000. So the specs of the phone, uh, there's an IPS LCD display. Uh, it's not full HD, it's a uh, uh, 720p panel, though it's a 6.2 inch, uh, 6.2 inch uh, display. Uh, it comes with Android 9 Pi. Uh, all Nokia phones currently run Android 9 Pi, whether they were launched two years ago or three years ago, they all run Android 9 Pi because Nokia is committed to updating all their phones. Uh, it has a Qualcomm Snapdragon 429 processor, uh, 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage. But in Kenya, Nokia has promised to add a 16, uh, a 16 GB micro SD card inside the box. Uh, if you unbox the retail version, you'll find a free 16 gig um, micro SD card included. Uh, the front camera is 5 megapixels, uh, the back camera is 13 megapixels. Uh, there's an unremovable 4000 milliamp battery inside. Uh, there's no fingerprint scan a sensor as you can see there's no fingerprint sensor uh, and the recommended retail price is 13,999 as I had stated uh, it claims to have fast charging that's 10 watts uh, but I'll talk about that later on so yeah uh, for the last like I said about three weeks this has been a secondary device in my pocket because mainly uh, it supports fiber 4g uh, not Volte uh, because I don't know why it doesn't support Volte, but it supports fiber 4G data. So I've been using it as my phone for data uh, to uh, to tether, especially when I'm walking around uh, or I'm traveling instead of carrying the MiFi uh, from fiber because it, uh, it has better battery than the MiFi for sure. Uh, my main problem with the battery is uh, it takes a lot of time to charge. Uh, they claim it's a 10 watt fast charger which is not a fast charger anymore in the world where we have 45 watt chargers and vivo's upcoming 120 watt charger anyway so uh that's the main issue i've had with the battery it takes so long to charge i could leave it even for three hours for it to 
uh, get full, which is not a good thing because we have phones that fast charge currently and we're used to just plugging in your phone a couple of 20 minutes, you have almost 80% in some devices. So uh, it's, a, it's a bad thing to wait for the phone to fill up. The good thing, however, is that the 4,000 million battery is really good. I've traveled quite a long distance uh, using the phone as my hotspot and I've lasted about two days on just hotspot, not using the display, not doing anything from 100% to about 30%. So in terms of battery and a standby time, it's a really good phone. So if you want a good phone that supports fiber data and has good battery life, uh, this is the phone. I like the design of the phone. Uh, it, it looks good, it's well designed, uh, though the back is very blunt. Uh, looks like the, those Lumias from a couple of years ago. Uh, I hear that it comes with a single camera when the competition is uh, giving better cameras. You remember the TechnoSpark 3 Pro? That's a really good device. Get it if you want good cameras. Uh, this one, in terms of cameras, uh, no. Uh, the photos are bad. I don't. I, I, I don't even think they're worth sharing. Uh, they don't look good, uh, but they they can be used if you if you're into just text and uh, just showing around where you are. But they're not. This is not the best camera to get at this price point. I wish Nokia really takes a look at their sensors and their software and offers better camera because I've loved the Nokia 5.1 Plus camera. I've loved the Nokia 6.1 Plus camera. I have the Nokia 7.1, really good camera. So I don't know why at the Nokia 3.2, the camera is not amazing. And uh, I hope you check it out and try the camera yourself because uh, no, it's not a good camera. And the front camera is also not a very good uh, camera, but it's normal like all selfie cameras that you see around at five megapixels. In terms of performance, it's not a bad uh, phone. You can do most of your tasks pretty well. If, if those tasks involve social media, we're browsing uh, YouTube and a bit of light gaming for the very light gaming app. So don't expect to be gaming uh, PUBG or other uh, heavy games on this. You'll have a problem sometimes in performance where apps will stutter or lag or not respond, but it's expected at uh, this price point to the Snapdragon 429. However, uh, I saw with all Helio A22 processor phones that I've reviewed that uh, this one lags a bit more than Helio A22 phones because the Helio A22 processor, though MediaTek is a really good processor, I wish Nokia tried it out on this phone because the 429 is not doing it a good job. In terms of the display, uh, it's a 6.2 inch, 6.26 inch display, uh, which means it's a big display. And I know a couple of people who really want big phones. So if you want a big phone, this is a big phone. Uh, the Nokia 4.2 happens to be even smaller in display. So uh, I think Nokia is trying to target the low end market that really wants big displays. Uh, the resolution is 720, like I said, and it's good. It's a good display. I just have one issue with it. Uh, it doesn't get bright, as you can see. It doesn't get that bright. I've seen the Infinix and Transition phones, Techno, Infinix, Itel, really do very well in brightness. And I wish Nokia can do that. Even the Huawei has very good brightness for their phones. The Samsung A10 also has a very good display. So I'm wondering why Nokia didn't try on that. Something that I found quite, uh, I didn't quite expect was the weight of the phone. It's not heavy, but it's quite kind of bulky, which is a good thing if you associate bulkiness with premiumness because it's well built and even though plastic it feels kind of good but uh, if you want a light phone uh, this is not a light this is not the lightest of phones it is light it's not very heavy but it's bulky when you compare it to lighter phones here so yeah uh, the best thing about this phone is you're guaranteed of security updates so 2019 Android 9 uh, 2020, Android 10, 2021, Android 11. Nokia is guaranteeing you that by 2021, you'll still be running the latest version of Android. So that's a reason to pick it up if you're into uh, the latest version of Android, because you'll still pass it down to someone in 2021 as a phone that's running the latest version of Android, whether the latest version of Android will support the specs it currently has. And that's a good thing because uh, most phones that we buy from other companies don't guarantee you that. Nokia is guaranteeing you three years of security updates and that's also a good thing. But in terms of specs, I feel like Nokia is still lagging behind and I wish they could 
offer some quite better specs in terms of cameras than the display and a, a little bit on fast charging so that they come to par with other phones because take for example uh, the storage 16 gigs of internal storage immediately i restored all my apps and data i was being told you're running alone space 16 gb is not enough uh, nokia is claiming that uh, with features like uh, Google Photos, you can easily back up your photos to the cloud uh, with files go, you can easily clear unnecessary data, but we are seeing a world where phone storage is going up to one terabyte because videos, uh, you want them when you when you want them, uh, you want big apps on your phone and this phone won't have the space to handle big apps. So I wish they had at least 32 gigs of internal storage because even with the including 16 GB micro SD card, uh, there's some limitations because you would want to expand your storage more than that. I wish Nokia does a better job with the next variant of 13 to 15k phones so that we see at least 32 gigs of internal storage because by next year I'm sure we'll be seeing 64 gigs of internal storage at this price point. So uh, if you want to pick this phone up, uh, check it out uh, first before trying before buying it because you might not find everything you want because it's an Android one phone so no gallery. Uh, and have a couple of things so make sure you check it out before you buy it and uh, tell me your thoughts on the Nokia 3.2 uh, I love that there is uh, I forgot to add I love that there is a Google dedicated assistant button on the side so when you press it uh, it goes directly to Google assistant uh, I love uh, the power button on the side this power button on the side uh, also acts as the led notification light which i haven't used i've only used it when i'm charging so that i see it's charging but that's all yeah it's a good phone uh but it's also not a good deal uh i wish it was cheaper if it were like 8k 9k 10k i would really recommend it but at this price point uh there's better options so yeah tell me your thoughts on the nokia 3.2 uh subscribe for the nokia 4.2 review and uh, yeah.